Welcome to the Property Elite Podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and Co-Founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. Welcome to part three of a three-part blog and podcast series focusing specifically on dampness in buildings. This week we'll be looking at testing to diagnose dampness and other causes of dampness. There's a number of tests that can be used to help diagnose dampness. However, they are not capable of being carried out during a normal survey. Firstly, we have concrete moisture tests. This is one of the simplest, most economical test methods for determining whether there may be, may be moisture in concrete. It involves duct taping a 450 millimeter square piece of plastic onto the exposed concrete and leaving it for 16 hours. Condensed moisture accumulation under the plastic at 16 hours can indicate a problem. Next, we have the calcium chloride test. This is where a calcium chloride disc is placed under a sealed plastic sheet and left to collect moisture vapour. After 24 hours, the disc is retrieved, weighed and compared to the disc pre-test weight. This weight difference indicates how much moisture vapour has emerged from the slab in 24 hours. Next, we have relative humidity testing of the slab via special moisture probes embedded in the concrete substrate. The most advanced and comprehensive of the three methods, this test measures the presence and quality of moisture throughout the depth of the slab. Once you know whether there's a moisture control problem, you can then advise the client to consult a professional floor and contractor who specializes in moisture mitigation. So moving on, what is penetrating damp? Penetrating damp is where moisture enters the property from outside in a horizontal direction. It can occur at any level and at almost any location in a property. Gravity then causes the downward movement of the damp into other areas, sometimes called falling damp, and it's identifiable visually by isolated patches of dampness. The main causes of penetrating damp are leaking water supplies or waste pipes, fretted mortar joints, defective brickwork, failure of tile grouts in showers and other wet areas, poorly functioning membranes in wet areas, cracked render, poor flashings, a defect in the adjacent property outside the owner's control, air conditioning or hot water system overflows leading to small localised patches of dampness, failure of cavity trays, especially in earlier buildings where roofing felt was used. One of the major causes of penetrating damp in pre-Second World War houses is linked to the use of cement strap pointing, which became popular in the late 1960s and 70s. A solid brick or stone wall built with lime mortar needs to breathe, and it does this by losing its moisture content through the lime mortar joints. This is lost when a cement mortar is used. The wall immediately starts to get wet due to the trap water, and the only way it can get out is via the brick or stone, or it is driven internally. Moving on, what is condensation? Condensation is water vapour in the air, in a house condensing on a cold surface. It can form on any surface and it may not be noticed until mould growth or rotting of materials occur. In the UK, it's mainly a winter problem, particularly where warm, moist air is generated in living areas. This then moves to the colder parts of the building. It normally appears on windows in the early morning and evaporates harmlessly as the house warms. A wall may be cold and attract condensation for several reasons. The walls face north or east. The wall may be only 112 mil thick, especially where an old external toilet or a coal house has been demolished or incorporated into the main house. The room may be unheated. Leaking gutters or pipe may make part of a wall cooler. Or there is cold bridging, more likely to occur in flats built in the 1960s and 70s. So what conditions are required for condensation to occur? The moisture in the air comes from a number of sources within a house. For example, water vapour is produced in relatively large quantities from normal day-to-day activities. A five-person household puts about 10 kilograms of water into the air every day without considering any heating. Houses have become more effectively sealed by the introduction of double glazing, draft excluders, fitted carpets, which prevent air movement up through suspended wooden floors and the removal of open fireplaces with the introduction of central heating. This keeps any moisture produced within the house and provides optimal conditions for condensation to occur. 
Ventilation is only effective if consistent throughout the whole envelope of the house. Often the conversion of houses into flats results in the inability or difficulty of obtaining a through airflow to aid ventilation due to the layout of the rooms. Modern lifestyles also mean that many houses remain unoccupied and unheated throughout the greater part of the day, allowing the fabric of the building to cool down. The moisture producing activities are then concentrated into relatively short periods, morning and evening when the structure is relatively cold and while the building is still warming up. Heating is only on for short periods, effectively only warming the air and not the fabric of the building. So there's little or no radiant heat to keep the air temperature up. We hope you enjoyed listening and reading to this three-part blog and podcast series on dampness in buildings. The diagnosis of damp is a complex area of practice and only experience in gaining further knowledge will help you to make your diagnoses more robust and based on sound testing and further investigations. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate, and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.